previously on Two Up and Overloaded. We came face to face with some terrifying reptiles, along with some other amazing wildlife of Sarawak, East Malaysia. But our wildlife adventures that day were not over, as we headed with our friend Lee to the Semungo Wildlife Center. After getting tickets at the front, we took this little bus thing. What are those called? It's a, a, the golf cart <laughs> yeah. trolley. <laughs> the golf cart trolley. It's what they put like little kids on at Disneyland, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We took one of those sure further did. into the park. And as it came to a stop at a parking lot, we noticed a huge crowd of people gathering around this one corner of the parking lot. And we knew there had to be something going yeah. on in the forest there, something special in the trees. Yes. It was an orangutan. It was super, super duper awesome. Yeah. It was a pair of tangs. Yeah. That's true. There were two of them. But there was one that was really kind of front and center, right there. And there was a guy who was throwing up a kind of fruit up to the orangutan. I think it might have been jackfruit or something. Looks well, really, really yellow. So the orangutan actually moved down out of the tree and towards the crowd of people. And the ranger was like, get back, get back. Everybody move back. But uh, the orangutan climbed down the tree and then the orangutan went into the jungle. It knew that it was about to rain. <laughs> they could sense that a thunderstorm of epic proportions was about to unleash its wrath upon us. We all kind of ran for shelter. There's a little, uh, for lack of a better word, shelter that we ran under. <laughs> And we waited for our little trolley thing to, to come pick us up. Golf cart trolley. Golf cart trolley. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining so hard. And under the shelter, we weren't getting wet. But once we got into that trolley yeah. and then trying to get to the car in the parking lot, I mean, we just got soaked. Yeah. And when it rains, it pours. It, yeah, yeah, it does, though. <laughs> it's like, it's just crazy thunderstorm. We were in Lee's car and you couldn't see 20 feet ahead of you. It no. Was, Traffic was Whoa. just stopped. It was it, yeah. crazy. We went somewhere to eat and getting out of the car into the restaurant, which is, they're always like outdoors. Yeah. You know, well, there's no like, you know, there's no doors. They're indoors with outdoors. <laughs> you get out of the car and you're instantly just like, whoosh. It was raining coochings and dogs. <laughs> mm. Well, I think with the chicken, I have to use my fingers. You want to do your finger? Yes. Yeah. This restaurant had such good food. It had a very special sauce from the peninsular side of Malaysia. So this was our first time eating peninsular Malaysian food. It was from a place called Kota Baru, and it was delicious, like a sauce that went over chicken and rice. That is so good. All right, you want to take the most delicious thing in the world? Yeah. That's the dive for. We can't thank Lee enough for his friendship and his kindness and for escorting us around Kuching. And we're glad that uh, we now have acquired yet another lifelong friend. I don't feel comfortable, but you have to Yeah, let's go to breakfast. Okay. Our fantastic right. adventures with Lee were far from over. But first, we had a not so great adventure. Because sometimes when your life is on the road, you need to take a moment to go to the doctor. And I had a motorcycle injury from a fall in Indonesia that was just not healing. Are you all right? Are you all right? So before we could go anywhere else, we needed to first go to a hospital. From what they could tell, it seemed like it's not healing. And that could require surgery, so 
I don't know. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll, we'll go. go. Through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. Okay, good morning. Today I'm going to be eating something that is considered by Anthony Bourdain to be the breakfast of the gods. It is called Sarawak Laksa. Check it out. This was actually my first time having one of my new favorite foods of the whole world. And it is called laksa. To be specific, laksa Sarawak. It's made with a coconut broth that is spicy. So this is the special Sarawak version that is not like the rest of Malaysia. Let's give it a try. Oh, it's good. It's spicy, but it's really good. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's like all the flavors that I love put into one. <laughs> it's almost like a coconut creamy Thai curry that has shrimp, and very thin rice noodles and bean sprouts and other vegetables in it. Really, really good. Glutinous flour and bean paste inside. I like it. What do you think, Shem? Not bad. <laughs> I like it. So as we were spending time in Kuching, catching up on making videos and taking a bit of a rest from the constant fatigue of the road, we figured this would be as good of a moment as any to go to the doctor. And we also had been renting this amazing apartment from our good friends Jason and Pilly. Thank you Jason and Pilly and Aya and Ibu, you guys are the best to let us rent this place. Thank Indeed. you so much. Ah, wow, it's, it's right. beautiful. Look at this wonderful gift. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you. And it's just given us some time to settle down and do some research on the doctors to go to. Malaysia is one of the best places to go because the healthcare services are top notch while being still very affordable. Yeah, there's some cool apps out there that can help you decide where to go with trusted reviews and such. One of them being On Vacation Doctor. Just gets you in contact with doctors that speak English, which is really important because sometimes when you're describing yeah. <laughs> pain and issue, There's poor translation. I mean, we had like a trio of like failures, majorly on my <laughs> end. I had lost some like hearing. I'm listening to podcast and stuff, and it seems echoey. Yeah. And you know, it was like, really affecting your mood too. It was, yeah, I was very, I was even more stubborn. <laughs> if you can imagine. Can you imagine, <laughs> folks? Yeah, I just I wanted to know if it was what it was because I yeah. needed it to go away. I mean, we ride motorcycles around the world for like six years, so that's a lot of wind damage. And when I was in my teenagers, there's a yeah. lot of Pantera and Guns N' Roses blaring in my ears. So and no earplugs at that point in time. Young so. and reckless. Now yeah. I'm old and a wreck. <laughs> So we wanted to see the hearing doctor. And we're about to insert a gross picture. So <laughs> children, women, men under 70. <laughs> Close your eyes, men over 70 can handle this. I'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got that too. I got that too. <laughs> But I went to the hearing doctor and there was a very nice gentleman and he pulled out of my head like a Yeah, a so stick. much wax. It was, it was a lot of earwax. <laughs> This is true. The before and after of my eardrums. How disgusting is that, folks? We won't go into further details because I don't want to lose subscribers. Oh, but the best part is they give you this little before and after thing, like an ultrasound, right? It's yeah, like, this picture, right? They give you this picture of like shame. You know, to bring home. They're like, I'm gonna put it on my fridge or something. But I turned it around and I wrote a little postcard to my brother Matt and yeah. sent it to him. 
and it never got to him because I think along the way, all the postal service was just vomiting. <laughs> just, vomiting. Vomiting. just like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> Until someone finally burnt it. <laughs> you look into the mirror, you can see this yeah. color, right? All the way up going down. You went to the dentist. Yeah, I had this nerve pain, ghost pain, and I've had a, a root canal done. I call it my crown of Africa. I was, yes. I was crowned in Uganda. Yes, we lived in Uganda for a little bit during the pandemic. Yeah. And you got a crown from our favorite little dentist over Stanley. there, Stanley. I got a root canal, but it had been giving me trouble forever since. Yeah, um, reoccurring infections, actually. It was pretty bad. And so we went to a dentist who said that the, the root canal was not done all the way down. And so mid, he gave me a new root canal. Right, how exciting. <laughs> Halfway through the root canal, he said, your tooth is, is highly damaged. And yeah. so... They pulled, pulled my tooth. It out. Mm -hmm. So now I have like a half a pound of earwax removed, <laughs> a couple grams of a tooth removed. Are you feeling more lightheaded now? I am. <laughs> I'm still grumpy. Oh. Can't take that away from me. It's my bloodline. <laughs> but the most important doctor that we went to go see Excuse was. Excuse me. <laughs> I think. The ear guy. <laughs> the most important doctor was for my wrist. Okay, so as you may know, um, about three months ago, I fell getting off the motorcycle and hurt my wrist. I fell in a ditch and put my hand out and I pretty much went immediately to the nearest hospital in Chianjur in Indonesia and they took x-rays and according to the x-rays, I had not broken any bones, so that was really, really great. I was trying to take care of my wrist after that and for about the first two weeks it was feeling pretty good, like it was really on the mend. But then after that it started getting worse and getting a lot more pain. I don't know if I re-injured it in some way, but it's been three months now and now it doesn't move and it doesn't move back or forward. I can bend my fingers back, that. but the wrist... This is as far back as it bends, whereas this one goes like that, and then it doesn't bend any more than that. I can't put any pressure on it. I can't be like, stop! Like, it just doesn't bend. <laughs> I can't, like, do a push-up, obviously. Air push I can't even do air push-ups, no. So, that's not good, and... I definitely want it to get checked out again. So today we are going to go to the hospital and talk to the doctors and see what's going on because there's definitely something wrong. So we went to one of the biggest hospitals here in Kuching who had specialists in this area. But unfortunately, when they did the x-ray, they were not able to get any conclusive no. determination of whether my wrist whether my whether wrist, wrist was, <laughs> was injured or not. <laughs> There's a small little scaphoid bone that they said it could be broken, it might not be. It doesn't look like there's a lot of healing going on, but we're not sure, so they wanted to get an MRI. And this was my first time in an MRI. It is big, it's loud, it's clunky. You have to hold perfectly still for a very long time. And for me, that was thankfully only about 20 minutes, but it's still pretty uncomfortable and very, very loud and, and unnerving. got out of it, and then the worst part happened. I just got out of the MRI, which was an interesting experience. Basically, they're not sure if I have a broken bone or not. It might be a tiny fracture. They want to see how much is healing. It might not be anything, but there is something wrong. But that's why the MRI was needed. But from what they could tell, it seemed like it's not healing. Worst case scenario is I would need surgery. They said, look, we don't know if there's any healing happening here. If there isn't any healing, you are probably going to need some sort no. of surgery. 
like a bone graft was going to be involved because we didn't catch it in time. Along with titanium rods, yeah. it sounded pretty bad. It sounded poo-pooish. But they said that they wouldn't know for sure until the MRI results came in, which would be the next, the next morning. day, and it's like 13 hours of like, oh my god. We'll see. We'll come back tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. to find out the results. Okay, so it is the morning that we are gonna go back to the hospital and see the official diagnosis of my wrist. I got an MRI and that should tell if my scaphoid is broken or not, or if I need to have surgery. So, we're gonna go find out, wish us luck. The next morning, we headed to the hospital. Good news, good news, good news. The MRI showed that I do not have a very serious broken bone. If anything, it's just small minor fractures and it seems to be healing. And in general, I don't need a cast. I don't need surgery. All I need is time and love and patience and doing some exercises with my wrist. Yay! This is such, such, such good news. Oh, what a great day. I did not have any broken bones. And as you can see, since then, it has improved yeah. dramatically. It is not 100%, but it bends a whole lot better than it used to. This is true. Show people your purple palm. Oh. <laughs> and to comment below, guess why Marissa's hands are purple. <laughs> so we had a celebratory meal right after the good news and went to our favorite little restaurant in the area. Oh, yeah. It's called All the All In Cafe. Yeah. Hi. I'm here at my favorite little restaurant here. We yeah. always, always eat here. And this is Andy, and he is Andy. just the best. Oh. He's such a great chef, yeah. and we absolutely love all the food that he cooks here, and we come here all the time. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you so much. <laughs> and our dear friend Andy works there. He became our friend because we went to this restaurant all the time. Because they make and too he's good just food. amazing. He's an awesome person. And Andy makes these wonderful Indian breads called roti chennai. Oh, I mean, he makes all sorts of different types, but those are the ones that we like yeah. and a special curry sauce that goes along with it. And he's just an awesome dude. And through Google Translate and broken Malay on her. Yeah, there's a language barrier. Malay. But it's just, it's really cool. We really are appreciative of his kindness everybody's kindness. Uh, Lee has just yes. been, you know, an awesome tour guide. And he wanted to take us to that night bridge. Yeah! So, for further celebration, we went to this gorgeous bridge at night that was all lit up. Walking down that bridge was like Bifrost from Thor. Oh, that bridge in Asgard, the Rainbow Bridge? Yeah! yeah it was like that! It was totally awesome. I was Thor. <laughs> Just, man, I didn't know if that was obvious. <laughs> I'll be low-key, don't okay, worry. Fine, you're But uh, it was about time that we felt we wanted to get back on a motor scooter. Mm -hmm. And Lee, he said uh, that we could borrow his little Honda 150. Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to do something super special. We're going to be riding a motorcycle here in Malaysia for the first time. As you probably know, we had to leave Dorco, our motorcycle, back in Indonesia. But here, our friend Lee is going to be letting us use his motorcycle and uh, one of his motorcycles so that we're going to go together to a very special place that a lot of motorcyclists here go to called Mile Zero or Kilometer Zero. It's kind of like the end of the road of Borneo. So that should be pretty cool and we're super excited to finally be on the road in Malaysia. 150 cc's, small motorcycle. Small nice. bike, light bike. bike. I love it. What is it exactly? Honda RS150R. This one. Yeah. And he yeah. would ride 
his BMW GS1200. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, this sounds awesome. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know how the little 150 was gonna keep up with the 1200. <laughs> you know. Especially with both of us on it. Yeah. <laughs> That will all be in the next episode. We're going faster than we are on Torco. Look at that. 85. Cruising, folks. Okay. We're doing 100. We're only in fifth gear. We got a whole nother gear to burn through. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. We'd love to have you guys along for the ride. Uh, and if you are interested, we do have a Patreon page where we release the videos like five days to a week early. Mm -hmm. And we send out postcards from wherever we are in the world. So check out our Patreon link in the description below, and we hope to see you there. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. The thing about Laksa is that it could be spice level one, <laughs> or it could be spice level 101. And yeah. You, don't, it's, you just don't know what you're getting until you're like, you're either crying tears of happiness or <laughs> tears of, pain. of tears of pain. Yes, and sometimes both. Yes. <laughs> one out of each. A tear <laughs> and a little blood drops. <laughs>